I bet right now you got a lot of free time on your hands and not a lot of games on your Switch. Look, I know Animal Crossing is great and everything, and I'm having a lot of fun playing with friends and streaming it over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. But I know that it's not for everybody. And besides Animal Crossing, there's not much going on in the Switch space right now. Or so it might seem. If you look past your nose, you might find some solid indie gems out right now that deserve way more recognition. And what better time to give them that recognition than right now? Boy, that last Nintendo Direct was great, wasn't it? All right, well, we'll get some new first party stuff eventually, but for right now, we gotta make do with games like Good Job, which was announced and released during that last Nintendo Direct. This is a weird one. It was published by Nintendo, but developed by a company called Paladin Studios, which has only really ever done licensed mobile games, which doesn't sound too promising. But Good Job is great. It's a sort of isometric puzzle game. You play this little industrial sign looking guy who just started working for his dad's company. You're given tasks that you have to do in just the absolute shittiest way possible. It doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you get it done. The puzzles are very simple, but the act of completing the puzzles is super fun. It's about the journey, not the destination. For example, when you find out part of getting the projector hooked up is blasting it through the wall. Oh, oh. It's a neat little surprise. Oh. I did not uh, expect that to be the way to catapult it through the wall. Good job just came out, but it's already got an 85 on Metacritic and you can get it now for $20 on the eShop. Sorry. Could you move? Could you guys move for, for a minute? Thank you. Uh, you guys can sit up here. You guys can sit up here. It's all right. That was you, you guys did that. That was you guys. Hey, we're good, right? Full disclosure, the whole reason I'm making this video is because I wanted an excuse to talk about Dog or I. I only heard about this game because of an email that I got. Normally, I completely ignore emails that don't have a picture in the body, and I especially ignore PR emails from Gmail accounts. But something about Game Boy and Dog and the simplicity of this email had me intrigued. I was sucked in by the Game Boy aesthetic, and you all know I'm a sucker for 2D platformers. The fact that the game was on sale for just $2.50 at the time sealed the deal for me. It plays exactly like a good Game Boy game, too. They even use the exact right pixel density, 144 up and 160 across. You've got to love their attention to detail. The fact that you can tell that that's a dog, even though the face is only like five pixels, is kind of amazing. The art style is fantastic, given the limitations. Anyway, it plays sort of like a mix between Mega Man and Ninja Gaiden. It's a very simple game. I mean, you shouldn't expect even this much for just $2.50. You can control the game with just two buttons. And certain enemies and bosses activate quick time events for more damage. I'm normally not one for quick time events, but these are very satisfying. Anyway, this is too new and unknown to have a Metacritic score, but it's currently on the eShop for just $2.50. It's normally $5. I don't know how long the sale is gonna be for, but at that price, this is the one you should probably buy the most out of everything on this list. For $2.50, just slap it on like it's part of the impulse buy rack. As long as you like retro styled 2D side scrollers, of course. You might remember Creature in the Well from a Nintendo Direct back in 2019. It snuck out on the Switch in September and I had no idea. I was intrigued by this game because it's a top-down hack and slash, but instead of fighting enemies, you're kind of just in a big pinball machine or pinball adventure game. So I didn't get to try it until now. The concept is super unique. There's a lot of this world to explore and a lot of different weapons you can find that vary the gameplay. I don't think it deserves a spot on the top of this list, but if you want something really different or you just like pinball games or maybe brick breaker games like Breakout, 
maybe you were the king of the Blackberry games back in the day, then you might just be the perfect person to pick up Creature in the Well. It's currently $15 on the eShop and has a Metacritic score of 76. Super Crush KO came out back in January, and I didn't hear about it until one of you guys told me about it in a Twitch stream the other day. You should be mesmerized by the art style. It's cute as sh. Your objective is to save your kidnapped cat Chubbs from some rando supervillain. It's a 2D platforming beat em up slash shooter. You use all of your abilities that you accumulate over the first few levels to combo through your opponents. Your combos get ranked per screen. The goal is to chain enough combos together to get an S rank, or to just get the highest rank you can. So you're constantly using all of your different abilities as fast as you can to rack up points. It's a lot of fun. After a certain point, you can kind of just turn off your brain. This is probably one of those games you'd want to beat in just a couple of sittings. I feel like I wouldn't want to drop this game and pick it back up later because I might forget all of the different abilities and how they chain together, or at least, it might take a while to get used to the game again. Also, it looks like there probably isn't very much variety in the environments, but the art style and the pretty comic booky cutscenes make up for it. And of course, the satisfying and addictive gameplay loop. It's currently just $15 on the eShop and has a Metacritic score of 77. I guess we should probably talk about Exit the Gungeon, shouldn't we? It was Nintendo's one more thing in their last Indie World presentation. Apparently, it's been out on Apple Arcade, and you can get it right now as part of your Apple Arcade subscription if you have that. I could never imagine playing a game like this on the phone. So I tried it, and yeah, don't play it on mobile. It's an auto shooter there. Just play it on Switch where you have buttons. Just like Enter the Gungeon, it's a bullet hell dungeon crawler, except this time it's 2D, which is way more my speed. The Gungeon games are brutally hard, and this is no exception. It looks a lot more daunting than it is, though. When you roll or jump, you're permeable, so you can pass right through the onslaught of bullets coming at you. That's the right word. Yes. Yes? Your weapons also get switched out pretty rapidly, adding another element to the chaos. Part of the game is trying to keep the good weapons. Just like its predecessor, levels are procedurally generated and death is permanent. So you will play through the beginning part over and over and over again. But the good news is, it'll be a different experience every time. You have to know if this is your thing before you dive into it. But if you like roguelike games, or if it does sound like your thing, it's only $10 on the eShop, making it one of the best deals on this list. And it's currently got a 72 on Metacritic, which Sounds a bit harsh, actually, yikes. Wonderling, or Bunderling, is, you guessed it, another 2D side-scroller. In this one, you play a bad guy, or a video game boss, their words. You're a goon of a video game boss. You auto-walk through the levels to find and murder the main character of a Mario-like game. It's an interesting concept. I first heard about it from Parker from Fanatics 4, who first heard about it at PAX right around the time it had just come out. So, you know what? I'll leave it to him to tell you what he told me. I was like five minutes from going to bed and probably only 200 tries or so from getting a string fish on the last two days before it's gone. And I was not successful, but Bob asked me to talk about Wonderling. So I learned about this game at PAX where I met Bob in person for the first time. Um, they gave me this, which is cute and fun. It's a cassette tape, just like the olden times. We're old now, but it also had the game code and I played it and enjoyed it quite a lot. So Wonderling is basically, you're this little Goomba looking dude, um, everything's veggie themed in this game, and you are given powers to be able to jump. So you can't do much right at the beginning of the game. It's an auto runner. Story wise, it's surprisingly complicated in some ways. It's left a bit ambiguous, like who's good, who's not good, and that kind of thing. But mechanically, which is ultimately most important, it's a 2D platformer akin to Mario or Celeste or whatever. But again, it's an auto runner, and you gain mechanics throughout the game in a pretty well paced way where you can actually use some of the mechanics that you learn later in the game and bring them back to levels that you didn't beat or didn't get all the collectibles for or something like that. And speaking of collectibles, let me show you this. You Most of the collectibles are outfits that you can get. I look like a detective. 
I'm very, very cool. And then there's also like additional challenge rooms. They do a good job of differentiating between kind of the base challenge and the extra stuff, sort of like in Celeste with the strawberries where it's like, you don't really need to get all this stuff, but if you want to, there it is. And those things are fairly challenging, I find. All in all, it's a fun time. Everybody seems to be liking it pretty well that's played it. Uh, it's just kind of gone under the radar, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's, I think, like $15 on the eShop, so worth a pickup. It took me about 10 hours to 100% complete the whole thing, so for whatever that's worth. And that's about it. I'm going to go to bed now and just dream about Stringfish. Okay, fine. I'll talk about Roomba. You play a sentient Roomba, you know, like the vacuum cleaner, and your job is to find and murder the intruders. So you're like a security Roomba in a really smart home, and you hack your environment to violently kill burglars. It's kind of like a stealth puzzle game. After you successfully thwart their efforts, you have to then clean up your mess before the owners come home. It's an interesting concept and of course provides for some ridiculous situations. But the only reason it made it onto this list is because it's just $3.99 right now. It's usually $5, which is also not bad. And it does not have a Metacritic score because I guess it's too new or unknown. So it's a good deal for a fun little romp. So that's about all I got as far as recent indie games on the Switch right now. It's been a while since I made a video like this. But all of those videos still apply if you want to see some more indie games that are worth checking out on the Switch. Just because they've been out for a while doesn't mean they're not good anymore. So I'll leave a playlist to all of those videos if you want to check out some more stuff. Maybe something came out between that last video and now that I missed, or maybe I actually saw it and I just didn't think it looked very good. Was there anything in this video that you played and liked or is there something that I actually did miss? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter and any and all this other social media garbage. Hey, did you know that I have a personal channel? It's called youtube.com slash Bob Wolf. There should be a vlog over there that's about the coronavirus in New York City. Hey, editing Bob, is that is that done yet? Is that up now? It'll be up today, sometime today. Could you just give me a minute? It's 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 been a lot. So you can go over to youtube.com slash Bob Wolf and I'll I'll link it at the end anyway, so you can check it out. I'll also mention that we have Amazon affiliate links in the description below, but I can't link to all of these games. So if you want to try one of these games, why don't you buy an eShop card off of Amazon using our link to help support us and to, you know, tell Nintendo, hey, they're the guys that told me about this game. Anyway, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule's usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We got Wolf Den live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. And we got Twitch streams all the time. They, I've been meaning to ramp those down so I could do other things, but now I'm home all the time. So those have been ramped up. Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support the channel is just subscribe. I love you all for doing that. And of course, share this video with a friend, a friend who needs some more stuff to play besides Animal Crossing right now. Thank you guys very much. Have yourselves a good week. And also check out Fanatics for the YouTube channel. I'm giving you a lot of homework and I'm so sorry, but you know, you got the time. Goodbye.